Today we will be reading Cat and Mouse in Partnership from the book Household Stories by the Brothers Grimm. This book was written by Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm in German in 1886. Its 1963 edition was translated by Lucy Crane, illustrated by Walter Crane, and published by Dover Publications Incorporated in New York. Let's begin. Cat and Mouse in Partnership A cat, having made acquaintance with a mouse, professed such great love and friendship for her that the mouse at last agreed that they should live and keep house together. We must make provision for the winter, said the cat, or we shall suffer hunger, and you, little mouse, must not stir out, or you will be caught in a trap. So they took counsel together and bought a little pot of fat. And then they could not tell where to put it for safety, but after long consideration the cat said there could not be a better place than the church, for nobody would steal there, and they would put it under the altar, and not touch it until they were really in want. So this was done, and the little pot placed in safety. But before long the cat was seized with a great wish to taste it. Listen to me, little mouse, said he. I have been asked by my cousin to stand godfather to a little son she has brought into the world. He is white with brown spots, and they want to have the christening today. So let me go to it, and you stay at home, and keep house. Oh yes, certainly, answered the mouse. Pray go by all means, and when you are feasting on all the good things, Think of me. I should so like a drop of the sweet red wine. But there was not a word of truth in all this. The cat had no cousin, and had not been asked to stand godfather. He went to the church, straight up to the little pot, and licked the fat off the top. Then. He took a walk over the roofs of the town, saw his acquaintances, stretched himself in the sun, and licked his whiskers as often as he thought of the little pot of fat. And then, when it was evening, he went home. Here you are at last, said the mouse. I expect you have had a merry time. Oh, pretty well, answered the cat. And what name did you give the child? asked the mouse. Top off, answered the cat dryly. Top off, cried the mouse. That is a singular and wonderful name. Is it common in your family? What does it matter? said the cat. It's not any worse than crumb picker, like your godchild. A little time after this, the cat was again seized with a longing. Again, I must ask you, said he to the mouse, to do me a favour and keep house alone for a day. I have been asked a second time to stand godfather. And as the little one has a white ring round its neck, I cannot well refuse. So the kind little mouse consented, and the cat crept along by the town wall until he reached the church, and going straight to the little pot of fat, devoured half of it. 
Nothing tastes so well as what one keeps to oneself, said he, feeling quite content with his day's work. When he reached home, the mouse asked what name had been given to the child. Half gone, answered the cat. Half gone, cried the mouse. I never heard such a name in my life. I'll bet it's not to be found in the calendar. Soon after that, the cat's mouth began to water again for the fat. Good things always come in threes, said he to the mouse. Again, I have been asked to stand godfather. The little one is quite black with white feet, and not any white hair on its body. Such a thing does not happen every day. So you will let me go, won't you? Top off, half gone, murmured the mouse. They are such curious names. I cannot but wonder at them. That's because you are always sitting at home, said the cat, in your little grey frock and hairy tail, never seeing the world and fancying all sorts of things. So the little mouse cleaned up the house and set it all in order. Meanwhile, the greedy cat went and made an end of the little pot of fat. Now, all is finished, one's mind will be easy, said he, and came home in the evening, quite sleek and comfortable. The mouse asked at once what name had been given to the third child. It won't please you any better than the others, answered the cat. It is called All Gone. All gone, cried the mouse. What an unheard of name. I never met with anything like it. All gone? Whatever can it mean? And shaking her head, she curled herself round and went to sleep. After that, the cat was not again asked to stand godfather. When the winter had come, and there was nothing more to be had out of doors, the mouse began to think of their store. Come, cat, said she. We will fetch our pot of fat. How good it will taste, to be sure. Of course it will, said the cat just as good as if you stuck your tongue out of window. So they set out, and when they reached the place, they found the pot, but it was standing empty. Oh, now I know what it all meant, cried the mouse. Now I see what sort of a partner you have been. Instead of standing godfather, you have devoured it all up. First, top off, then, half gone, then... Will you hold your tongue? screamed the cat. Another word, and I devour you too. And the poor little mouse, having all gone, on her tongue, out it came, and the cat leapt upon her and made an end of her. And that is the way of the world. The End <laughs>